These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And taking on the might of our quiz goliaths today are chemical waste. Now, four of this team met while studying chemistry at Leicester University. And to complete the team, Georgie has recruited her boyfriend, Robin. So let's meet them. Hi, I'm Georgie. I'm 22 and I'm a chemistry student. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm 23 and I'm a junior software engineer. Hi, I'm Phil, I'm 23, and I'm a chemistry student. Hi, I'm Jacob, I'm 22, and I'm a trainee teacher. Hi, I'm Becky, I'm 21, and I'm a carer. So, Georgie and team, welcome. Hey, Jeremy. Hi. Were, were you all <laughs> studying the same thing at Leicester? No, we had um, slightly different chemistry degrees. I had uh, pharmaceutical chemistry. Um... I had forensic chemistry. Forensic, so pharmaceutical... I was just straight chemistry, straight. yeah. OK. But they were, st they were still they chemistry. Were chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just other bits as well. Yeah, sure. And, but Robin is, is from a different place. The same place, but I was studying photography. Okay. At yeah. University. Yeah. So we've got a bit of we've got a bit of breadth there. Yeah. Photography and chemistry. A lot of chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Of chemistry. I'm going to be so upset if science doesn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> we will too. <laughs> Do you still quiz? Um, we don't quiz all together because we all live in well, four of us, no, three of us live in Leicester still. Um, but Jacob lives in York and Becky's in Wakefield now. So we haven't quizzed together as a team in a long time. It's the first time in a while. I don't think we've had a team called Chemical Waste before. <laughs> Is that, am I to take from that that you're, you don't feel you're yet in the jobs that you should be with your chemistry degrees? <laughs> well, when we started quizzing, we kind of we didn't really intend to continue on in, with science, really. <laughs> but it turns out most of us have, so it's not really the most appropriate name anymore. But sticking with it. OK, well, good luck to Chemical Waste. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenges. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Chemical Waste, the eggheads have won just the last game, which means £2,000 says you can't beat them today. And the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of history, not chemistry. Phil, I think that that's you. Yes, <laughs> okay. Phil on history? OK, Phil against um, which egghead? Arctic history and... I'll go against Tremendous Knowledge Dave, I think. OK, so Phil from Chemical Waste against Tremendous Knowledge Dave from the Eggheads on History. And just to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in our question room? Have you got a history background, Phil, or are you another chemist? Um, no, I'm a chemist. It's more of an interest uh, than anything else, to be honest. And you're a drummer as well? Yes, whenever, whenever I get the chance. Not so much in Leicester, because it would annoy the neighbours. But um, back at home, yeah. Whenever it's, I get the chance. It annoys your parents then, does it? Um, probably a little bit, but they, uh, they let me get away with it. OK, we'll get the drums out if you get into trouble in this round, OK? History is the subject, Phil, and would you like to go first or second? Um, I'll go first, please. Here we go. How many times did Queen Mary I of England marry? Once, three times or five times? Um, Mary I... She was married to Philip II of Spain. Um, so I think I'm going to go for probably just once. Is he right about Philip II? Great answer. Mm -hmm. Well yeah. done. Terrific answer. You got it right, Philip. Well done, Phil. OK, so we're dealing here with a historian disguised as a chemist. That's what's happening. This guy knows his history. Taking us by surprise. Tremendous knowledge, Dave. Who was king of Great Britain and Ireland for nearly 60 years until his death in 1820? Is it James II, George III or Edward V? That's George the Third. George the Third is quite right. Okay, Phil, back to you. Samarkand, a major city in modern-day Uzbekistan, had a central position on which historic trade route? Is it the Via Maris, Silk Road, or Appian Way? Um, okay, I don't know this one. I know the Silk Road ended up in China, um, so I guess it's a bit out of the way. Um, I think I'm just going to have to go for the Appian Way. Now, let's have a think here. Appian Way, eh, kids? Is that Rome? 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 Rome's 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 in Italy. So, in Italy, yeah, it's the Silk Road. Oh, it is. Phil, okay. sorry. I'm sure you're going to get that right as well, just for playing with such confidence. OK, tremendous knowledge, Dave, to take the lead. 
In ancient Rome, a hypercost was a type of what? Is it military fort, central heating system, or observatory? It's a central heating system. Well done, Dave, you got it right. Central heating system. So, Dave is in the lead. It means you need to get this one right, Phil. Don't want to see you pitched out of the contest this early. Okay. In 1802, the saint Academy was founded in France for the training of which group of people? Is it soldiers, lawyers, or priests? And saint is S-A-I-N-T hyphen C-Y-R. 1802. Um, I guess around then there was a lot going on with the French Empire. Napoleon was not far off. Um, so I don't know, but logically, I'm probably going to go for soldiers. Soldiers is the right answer. <laughs> Have you put your, your wizard player into the first round here? Yeah. <laughs> is that what you've done? <laughs> That's a high-risk strategy. Because <laughs> if Dave gets this one right, Phil is out. Where in London was the proclamation of the accession of Elizabeth II first read out on the 6th of February, 1952? Dave, was it Buckingham Palace, St James's Palace, or Guildhall? I don't know the answer to this. Temptation was to go for Buckingham Palace. But, you know, um, I'm just going to veer away from it. Um, I'll go St James's Palace. You've got it right. St James's Palace it is. Sorry, Phil. Been knocked out there. The wretched old Silk Road. The Silk Road, yeah. Ah, that's so annoying. Dave, well done. You're in the final round. Please, both of you, come back to us and we'll play on. Well, Phil, I'm sorry to see you go, cos I yeah. can tell history's your thing. Yeah, I quite like it. It's definitely an interest, um, so I read up about it when I can. Um, but I guess it didn't quite fall right this time. Georgie, I realised tactically you had to put him in for history yeah. cos there's a good chance of him getting the round, but they, he's a big loss. He's definitely a big loss, yeah. We'll okay. see what we can do. Yeah, let's see where chemical waste goes from here. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the team name, I must say. So they've lost a brain. The Airkids have not lost a brain so far. The next subject is arts and books. Who would like this? Uh, Robin's Robin. Robin. yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah, Robin's Robin. Robin. yeah. OK, the non-chemist. Against which one? Anyone but Dave? I think I'll go against Barry, please. OK, so Robin from Chemical Waste versus Barry, who, by the way, is a chemistry graduate. Yes. yes. Is that right? So you're mm -hmm. kindred... This is a weird one, isn't it? The yeah. one non-chemist <laughs> takes the one chemist <laughs> on arts and books. I can't work it out. But to ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. Robin, over to you. It's arts and books. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first, please. Here we go. Good luck. Which pronoun is used as the title of an 1887 H. Ryder Haggard novel featuring the African queen Aisha? Is it we, me, or she? Well, straight away, I don't know, I don't know this one, so it's going to have to be a guess. Um, I'm going to rule out me and she and opt for the, the royal we. Eggheads, do you know? She. She, she is the she. answer. Yes. She is the original she who must be obeyed. Is that right? Is that where the phrase That's comes from? That's where the from? phrase comes from, yes. OK, your chance to take the lead, Barry. The work known in English as The Three Musketeers was originally written in which language? Is it French, Spanish or Italian? It was written in French. French is the right answer. Well done. Back to you, Robin. Which French phrase, meaning living picture, refers to a group of motionless people striking a dramatic pose? Is that façade passant? Cash verité or tableau vivant? Again, not so sure on this one, so it's going to be another punt. Um, I think I'm going to go with facile person. They're all... They're, they're cleverly made up, these ones. Judith, you're the French person here. I think it's tableau vivant. It's tableau vivant. Barry, your question. Who wrote the novel The Soldier's Wife, first published in 2012? Is it Nicola Barker, Joanna Trollope or Helen Dunmore? I don't know this one. Uh, Joanna Trollope is more commonly associated with Argus Argus. And the soldier's wife doesn't quite sound that way. I, I shall go for Helen Dunmore, but I really don't know. Judith knows. Joanna Trollope. Joanna Trollope is correct. She <laughs> did, I think she did The Rector's Wife, so maybe she had a whole yeah. series of wives. Yes. Barry got it wrong. Not Helen Dunmore. Joanna Trollope. How about that, Robin? Back in with a chance, but you need to get this one right. Chapter one of book one of which novel begins I have been here before, I said. Is that Brideshead Revisited, Jamaica Inn, or Wuthering Heights? I think the clue kind of 
might be in the title with this one. I think I'm going to go Brideshead Revisited. Yeah, that is actually very good quizzing because you're right. Well done. OK, so let's see. It's one each. Barry, if you get this right, you're in the final round. Which actress appeared in a reference manual for illustrators early in her career and so was inadvertently the model for Jack Vetriano's work, The Singing Butler? Is it Orla Brady, Sarah Parrish or Shelley Conn? What an excellent question. Well, I know this picture very well, but I didn't realise somebody, it was a, a, an actress who appeared in it as a model, and I really don't know. Could be Sarah Parrish, but the woman in the picture doesn't strike me as looking like Sarah Parrish, so I will discount her. I think I'll go for Orla Brady, but I really don't know this one. Orla Brady is the right answer, Barry. Well done. Sorry, Robin. You started to motor there, but I'm afraid he has beaten you in the round, so you're not in the final, and Barry is. If you both come back to us, we'll play on. As it stands, Chemical Waste have lost two brains from the final round. The eggheads have not lost a brain. The next subject is sport. Now, this, I think, is going to be good, isn't it? Jacob, I'm going to try and the stereotype and throw in the you ball. Yeah, boy Jacob, left. I think. <laughs> OK, I'll take the sport. <laughs> OK, Jacob on sport against... Obviously, can't be either at the end, Dave or Barry. Judith. Paddle Judith. Judith, I guess. OK, uh, I'll take Judith, please. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm amazed. <laughs> she's not amazed at all. Jacob from Chemical Waste versus Judith from the Eggheads on Sport. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. OK, so Jacob on Sport, would you like to go first or second? I will go first, please. Good luck to you. Thank you. Martina Navratilova, Steffi Graf and which other tennis star were the only players to win the ladies' singles title at Wimbledon between 1981 and 1993. Was it Chris Evert, Lindsay Davenport, or Virginia Wade? I have no idea, to be honest. Sport is, well, not an interest to say the least, to be honest. Um, I couldn't even begin to start to eliminate any of them, if I'm completely honest. I've never heard of any of them, but uh, when in doubt, I'm pretty sure everyone seems to say go down the middle, so I'll go do the same. I'll say Lindsay Davenport, please. OK, Lindsay Davenport. Now, funny enough, this is, this is stronger territory for you, Judith, isn't it? Because you love your tennis. Who do you think it is? I think it's Chris Evert. It is Chris Evert, Jacob. Did Lindsay Davenport win? Yes, yeah, she did once, in sort of 2001 or something. OK, and Virginia Wade was famously the Jubilee 1977, year. 77, yeah. 77, yeah. I remember it. My mum went crazy. Here's your question, Judith. At the 2012 Olympics, Perry Shakes Drayton represented Team GB in which sport? Handball, weightlifting, or athletics? She won a gold, but not at the Olympics, but she represented GB in athletics. Athletics is the correct answer. OK, Jacob. More than 20 African countries boycotted the 1976 Summer Olympics in protest at which country's sporting links with South Africa? Is it China, New Zealand, or Argentina? Oh. Again, I'm not really sure. I'm trying to think which countries would have sporting links with South Africa. Um, I know New Zealand does a few things with South Africa, such as cricket, uh, rugby and stuff like that. So I will go with New Zealand. But I'm not sure why they'd be annoyed. New Zealand is the right answer. Well done. Judith, your question to take the lead. Who was the first footballer to win the PFA Young Player of the Year award twice? Michael Owen, Ryan Giggs, or Glenn Hoddle? <laughs> Don't like football. Um, how can you win it twice? Because you're older the second time you win it. You don't count, as it were. <laughs> I don't, Michael Owen was a kind of boy wonder, wasn't he? I'm going to say Michael Owen. Yeah, I might have guessed that, but it's not right. Ryan Giggs is the answer, Judith. Oh. Jacob, this is tricky now. You've got one point. This is your third question. Get this one right and put some pressure on Judith. Your team needs you. Take your time here, Jacob. The Kovacs and the Casina are moves performed in which sport? Is it gymnastics, dressage, or figure skating? Again, I'm not really sure. Um, for some reason, I find myself being drawn to dressage, but I really have no idea why. Um, really don't think it could is gymnastics or figure skating, so I think I'll go with dressage. 
dressage. Um, Judith, you might know this because you like dressage. Is it dressage? It's either that or figure skating, I think. Anyone, anyone on the team there? Gone for figure skating, I think, but I don't know. Everyone is wrong. It's gymnastics. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jacob. Never mind. Judith, <laughs> your question. What colour are the racing silks of the Godolphin horse racing team? Purple, blue or green? If you get this right, Judith, you're in the final round. They are blue. You've won on sport again. Well, well pace, read the papers. There we are. You've done it. <laughs> Judith, well done on sport. And she's taken her place in the final round. So maybe that, that whole jinx is now history. Sorry, Jacob, you've been knocked out by Judith. That's OK. The upside is it will improve her mood for several days. <laughs> Please, both of you, come back and rejoin your teams. As it stands, Chemical Waste have lost three brains from the final round. What do we do now, Georgie? What is the... Do we switch tactics, bring on another chemist? We're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think we'll just go for... We'll have to see what comes up and then work out from there. I'm desperate for science to come up. It has to come. But I have to tell you, the, the next subject, chosen at random, is music. That's so Becky. We, we've not had a chemistry question. Becky, it's you. Yeah. OK. Subject. Before you go... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> tell us which eggheads. There they all are. Reckon? Pat or for. Kevin? Oh, Kevin. Who, who's better? Literally up to you. Oh. Um, I'll go Kevin. OK, some people just get a thrill from being in the question room with Kevin. <laughs> That's because of his legendary status. So it is Becky from Chemical Waste versus Kevin from the eggheads on music. Please... Go to the question room now. So, Becky, although you are a chemist, you love your music, I know. Uh, yes, you could say that. Because you do musical theatre? Um, I do. I direct at a, uh, a youth theatre, so that's good. We're doing Alice in Wonderland at the moment, a musical version, so... Isn't that wonderful? So, music, Becky, would you like to go first or second? Um, I'll go first. Here is your question, Becky. Good luck against the maestro. Which song, a UK number one in 2011, contains the lines, it's not about the money, 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 we don't need your money, money, money? Is it price tag, we found love, or someone like you? Um, I believe that song is sung by Jessie J. If it's not, I've just made a fool of myself. But I'm going to say that it is price tag. Price tag is right. Well done. Kevin, your question. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass, are lines from which popular song, Kevin? Is it Morning Is Broken, All Things Bright and Beautiful, or Lord of the Dance? Yeah, it's uh, Morning Has Broken. It is indeed Morning Has Broken. Becky, which of these singers was born in Bay City, Michigan in 1958? Was it Cher, Debbie Harry, or Madonna? 1958, which would make them... That's why I'm going to get my maths wrong. Um, 55, will it make them? Um, I have no idea, really. I'm going to say that... I could be really insulting here, but I'm going to say that Madonna's probably her mid-50s, so I'm going to go for Madonna. That's excellent play, Becky. You're quite right. It's Madonna. And I think Debbie Harry's over 60 now, is that right? Yes, yeah. yeah so, and Cher as well, probably, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, she is, yeah. 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 OK, Kevin, your question. The songs I Hope I Get It and I Can Do That feature in which musical? Is it The Wiz, A Chorus Line or Funny Girl? Yeah, I think, well, the, I hope the clue is in the song title there because A Chorus Line is about a group of Hope Force trying to um, get parts in a big Broadway musical. Uh, so I think it's a chorus line. It is a chorus line. Right up Daphne Street, that question, but she's not here. So 2-2, two, two, Becky, you're playing well. Let's see if we can get you into the final and pitch Kevin overboard, which would help. Who composed the music for the pantomime ballet, The Miraculous Mandarin? Is it Berlioz, Bruckner or Bartok? I've spent a lot of time recently looking over um, classical composers and these three have not been included in my, um, in my research, so I wouldn't even know where to start to narrow down. So I'm just going to go straight down the middle, I think, and say Bruckner. 
It's it's Bartok. It is Bartok, I'm afraid. Okay, Kevin, your question for the round. In which category did Gautier's album, Making Mirrors, win a Grammy in 2013? Is it New Age, Alternative Music, or Urban Contemporary? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll eliminate New Age, but... He had a number one from it uh, with somebody that I used to know. Would it, what, how would it be described? Would it, could it be described as alternative music? I th I'm... I think I would have to go for urban contemporary. What do you think, team? I think it's alternative. Yeah, you're wrong, Kevin. It's alternative. Alternative isn't it? music. Mm, okay. Could maybe have been either, couldn't it? But yeah. uh, you got it wrong. So alternative mm. music. Well done to you, Becky, because you've taken the strongest egghead to sudden death. It's a tiny bit harder now for you. I don't give you alternative answers, okay? Which band released the album The First of a Million Kisses in 1988? Take your time. I am just going to have to take a guess at it, and I just know I'm going to kick myself. But I will say... I'm worried I'm going to get one that isn't even in the 80s now. Uh, U2? It's not U2. When were you born? 91. 91, wow. Well, not having been there physically existed at the time when this record came out is quite a good alibi. It's fairground attraction. Sorry, Becky, but let's see what happens here to Kevin. For the round, Kevin, which progressive rock band formed in 1966 in Lancashire became known by the initials BJH. I think I'm in the same situation here. I'm sure I'm going to kick myself with this one. Nothing's coming to mind. Be formed in Lancashire in 66. I can't think of anything, Jeremy, I'm afraid. It's just, it, my mind has gone completely blank. That doesn't happen so, very often. No, it does occasionally. So, I, it's something that I know I should know, and so I, I know I'm going to know the answer. Oh, so, you're so, going to know the answer yeah. for sure. OK, I'll, I'll take that as yeah, a pass. Yeah. If I say the word Barclay, you'll get it straight James away. James Harvest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Barclay just, just James Harvest. Oh, so you're still in it, Becky. Come on. Good luck to you. Book your place in the final. Here we go. Which venue was the home of the New York Philharmonic until 1962 when it moved to the Lincoln Center? I have absolutely no idea. And it should be something that I should no. No, I have absolutely no idea. So I am going to make something up. <laughs> and um, I will say the New York Opera House. <laughs> you know this, Kevin? Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall is the answer. So Kevin has a chance for the round here on Sudden Death. The musician Anushka Shanka is best known for playing which stringed instrument? Well, I think she's followed in... Um her father Ravi's footsteps and I think she's a sitar player. Sitar is the right answer. You've taken the round, Kevin. Bad luck, Becky. You held him off for a while there, but it wasn't to be. So, tricky times for chemical waste in the final. Come back to us, both of you, and we will play that final round. So, this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, that's Robin, Phil, Jacob and Becky from Chemical Waste. Would you please leave the studio? Well, Georgie, I know this wasn't the plan quite. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but you can definitely still win. You're playing to win Chemical Waste £2,000. Barry, Pat, Judith, Kevin and Dave, you're playing for something that money cannot buy the Eggheads' reputation. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, the questions are all general knowledge, and you are allowed to confer <laughs> what's to do. So, Georgie, the question is, is your one brain better than the Eggheads' five? And would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. All right, good luck to you, Georgie. Here we go. Which of these is a French word for bird? Is it oiseau? Grenouille or Lapin? I'm very pleased this came up because um, I actually know a bit of French. Um, I did a French S level. Uh, Grenouille is frog, Lapin is rabbit and Oiseau is bird. I wish I could give you three points for that. I feel <laughs> that we should give three points for that. It's just one, but you got it right. Well done. Oiseau. OK, kids. <sighs> Ethel Skakel married which member of the Kennedy family? 
1950. Was it John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, or Ted Kennedy? Who's the spokesman? Pat. It's Pat, isn't it? It's yeah. Robert. Ethel Robert. Ethel is Robert. Ethel Robert. Mm -hmm. Had lots of children. That's uh, Robert F. Kennedy. Robert F. Kennedy is correct. OK, so they're, they're chasing you. Here we go, Georgie. Lendl Bridge and Skeldergate Bridge are in which city? Lendl is L-E-N-D-A-L. Is it York, Preston or Lincoln? I don't know this one. I'm trying to think. I'm just going to have to guess randomly. I can't think. I'm going to go for Preston. I don't, I don't know the answer, though, I'm afraid. Hey, kids? I suspect it's York. It's York. Okay. It's York. Your chance to pull a head, eggheads. Here's your question. What type of creature is a blue-faced Lester? Is it duck, goat, or sheep? Lester or sheep? She's got yeah. border lessons, haven't you? A blue-faced Lester. Will be a duck. Mm. Mm. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. never heard of this oh. one. I don't think it'd be. I, I don't think, think it'd be a duck. I mean, there are Lester sheep. There are, Lester sheep, there are certainly Lester sheep. sheep. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that's the logical. The red the Lesters. Yeah. Mm. That's the cheese. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. so <laughs> on the yeah. Correct, don't yeah. be distracting. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't. It would be, oh, yeah, it would be tricky to go for anything else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sheep. we'll go for sheep. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're not sure at all. We're going to go for sheep. It is sheep. Well done, eggheads. Blue face Lester is sheep. Now that means, Georgie, you've got to get this one right to stay in the game. Take your time. Here we go. Third question. In which film did Lauren Bacall play a character called Vivian Rutledge? Is it Key Largo? To have and have not, or the big sleep. Again, I don't know this one. I'm trying to think. I'm not very good on sort of older films. Something's drawing me to the big sleep, but it's not really any basis behind it. Um, so I'm just gonna go for the big sleep, I think. You've got it right. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Here's your question, eh, kids? If you get this one right, the contest is over. In the card game, Contract Bridge, how many tricks must the team win to make a small slam, sometimes known as a little slam? Is it 8, 10, or 12? 12. I think it's 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 13 is a grand slam. I think it's 12. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think it's 12. It should be 12. It's just one below the maximum. Yeah. Uh, that should be 12. I fear we have some bridge players here. Yeah. The correct answer is 12, so we say congratulations, eggheads, you have won. So commiserations to the team known as Chemical Waste. <laughs> Still a great name. The eggheads have done what comes naturally to them, and they reign supreme over Quizland still. I'm afraid it means you won't be going home with the £2,000, so the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. £3,000 says they don't. Till then, goodbye. Cheltenham, Chicksbury, Droitwich and Wolverhampton. Final stops on Michael Portello's railway journey next. Then 60s homes in Surrey, all set for a makeover with a great interior design challenge here on BBC Two at 7.